Dr. Ross, you talked a little bit about the history of HBCUs, and the first HBCU was founded in 1837, and a lot has happened um, in, since that founding, and all of your institutions are over 100 years old, so you've had uh, the Civil Rights Movement, um, integration. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what do you attribute the success and longevity of HBCUs to? Well, first of all, you know, when you talk about the history of this country, and um, you know, we, we have a history that has brought us to this point. And as African Americans, blacks, we were looking to provide educational opportunities. We knew that that was the way, and we had uh, good white brothers and sisters that were wanting the same thing. Uh, so if you talk about just in Alabama, when you look at uh, Alabama State's founding, uh, you had out of Marion, Alabama, uh, you had Sanford University, which was Howard University in Marion. The American uh, Missionary Association uh, is responsible for a lot of the HBCUs, and it was because simply we couldn't go to any other institutions and had to provide uh, a way for blacks to be educated. And so while outwardly we couldn't do it, there were those that would help us learn to read, to write, and understand the value of education. And so the resilience, I believe, and people who were seeking a better way of life, who wanted the best for their family and themselves, that is what's ingrained in the HBCU, mm -hmm. providing an opportunity of a lifetime, really, uh, for those who seek it, uh, those who may have never gone to, a person in their family may have never gone to college, mm -hmm. uh, but their grandparents and their parents' parents, they had the wherewithal to provide an opportunity for children yet unborn. I mean, nine freed slaves mm -hmm. founded an institution that they would never go to. But they found it for myself uh, and recognizing Trustee McKenzie and those who graduated from Alabama State and, and all of the other HBCUs, they have the similar story. Mm -hmm. And so this resilience and this stick to itness and this wanting to provide just simply exist mm -hmm. and provide an opportunity is what continues to drive all of us. Uh, and as we see how the world has been shaped by the contributions of HBCUs. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the majority of judges in this country, the majority of engineers, mm -hmm. they have been produced by HBCUs. And as time has gone on, not because they couldn't go anywhere else, mm -hmm. but because going to an HBCU, and we have you know, one of the highest offices that are occupied by uh, an HBCU grad mm -hmm. uh, in Vice President Kamala Harris, but it's the cultural aspect. And Giovanni, um, uh, his, he wrote a book called um, Shelter in Time of Storm. Mm -hmm. And it provided not only an academic mm -hmm. for us, but a, a social awakening for us and how to cope, quite frankly, in a society that really had ostracized. Yeah. us and so that's the you know that's where HBCUs come from and that's kind of where uh, we stand now and so it's the strength the resilience and the the, the wanting to provide an opportunity for uh, any that seeker. I love that. Yeah. yeah. The strength and resilience. Dr. Glover would you have anything to add to that about the history of HBCUs? Well of course, the history of HBCU, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just a wonderful history because I, I, let me start with the end goal and come back. You know, our, our country cannot reach its goals without strong, sustainable HBCUs. The goals that are necessary to, to close the education gap, to close the wealth gap, to close the economic gap. So we need those strong HBCUs. But the HBCUs were founded uh, Back in the 1800s, the first one, and we have the same, for the same problem then. I mean, now that we had then, and so the the the, the it was founded out of necessity. 
for, to, to educate the newly free slaves. So when you want to educate the newly free slaves, we take the, we that same type of uh, fortitude and that same commitment to educate the, the, the African American students that are coming out of college, coming out of high school now. They need to know that here's a place, here's your safe haven. You're going to get a quality education here. So come on to Tennessee State, come on to Alabama State, come on to Alabama A&M. Because the number one reason for attending HBCU is to get a quality education. I mean, the band, the football team, the social life, everything else is just grazing. But you go to HBCU to make sure you get a quality education from people who care about you.